Hello everyone, welcome to the news with Gold Silver Bitcoin. My name is Justin O'Connell. All the news stories we'll be going over today you can see over at goldsilverbitcoin.com. We're starting today with JP Morgan predicting that there will be 20% unemployment and 25 million jobs lost. You'll see as we uh, go further into this episode that these estimates are considered a little light by some. But as the coronavirus outbreak has resulted in 16.8 million unemployment claims, and approximately one third of Americans not paying April rent, JP Morgan predicts gross domestic product will crater during the second quarter of 2020. Economists at the bank, which was founded as Bank of Manhattan in 1799, forecast that the GDP will plummet 40% during the spring. Overall unemployment, they predict, will climb to 20% in April. 25 million jobs will be lost. So, I mean, this 20, 20% figure is just for April. So, in, going into the summer, we're going to be seeing 30% uh, unemployment. That's Great Depression levels. The plunge would be the worst in U.S. history, according to uh, J.P. Morgan. Credit Suisse places the worst quarterly drop during the 2008 financial crisis at 8.4%. Uh, J.P. Morgan sees that a V-shaped recovery if social distancing guidelines are lifted but we've seen estimates that this could go on for as long as 18 months. We've all, we're also seeing, interestingly, um, proposals that entail rolling blackouts of the economy. So I guess um, like this could be a new normal, is uh, shutting down certain sectors of the economy. The Trump administration has officials, meanwhile, who are looking to get the country open as quickly as possible, according to their statements. As Larry Kudlow said, quote, as soon as the president feels comfortable with the medical issues, we are making everything necessary that American companies and American workers can be open for business and that they have the liquidity they need to operate the business in the interim. Uh, Kudlow calls for the op opening on the rolling basis over the coming months. As Federal Reserve uh, Chair Jerome Powell said on Thursday, while we all want it to happen as quickly as possible, we all want to avoid a false start where we partially reopen and that results in a spike in coronavirus cases and then we have to go back again to square one. So the next uh, story we're going to be going over today um, kind of uh, takes us a little deeper into the economic situation and I think you'll see that this uh, other report which uh, is based on uh, numerous reports including one by foreign policy uh, has a grimmer outlook uh, for instance, the U.S. economy is expected to shrink by a quarter, which is the same amount that it shrank during the 1929 to 1933 or 34 period at the onset of the Great Depression. The difference here is that we're looking at this quarter shrinkage happening within a few months. Unemployment could reach 30 percent. As Federal Reserve uh, Bank of St. Louis President James uh, Bullard said, this is a planned Organized partial shutdown of the U.S. economy in the second quarter. The overall goal is to keep everyone, households, and businesses whole. It is a huge shock, and we are trying to cope with it and keep it under control. I find it interesting that he uses the uh, terms planned and organized. This is a planned, organized partial shutdown of the U.S. economy in the second quarter. quarter. By the looks of it from the outside looking in, that this was more a reaction and a not planned organized effort to like shut down the economy um, so that is that coronavirus cases started um, spiking and the states decided to start closing the economy on their own like gavin newsom took the lead uh, here in california uh, when it comes to the united states but here we have a, f a federal reserve chairman saying that it is quote planned and organized um, and clearly he's speaking at the federal level he's speaking on behalf of the federal reserve Unemployment will be worse than the Great Depression and three times that than during the 2007 to 2009 recession. Uh, Bullard anticipates a 50% plunge in gross domestic product. So whereas JP Morgan's looking at 25%, um, here we're looking at 50% uh, according to Bullard, the uh, Federal Reserve President in St. Louis there. At the end of uh, March, U.S. unemployment had already reached 13%. That's the highest since World War II. And it started the month at record lows. 16.8 million have filed for unemployment uh, as of last Thursday, and we're looking at another un more unemployment numbers coming in in the next uh, 24 hours. U.S. unemployment increases currently at approximately 0.5% per day. 
and uh, the unemployment rate could reach 30% by the summer. So we've seen uh, the sectors of the economy in which 80% of Americans work shut down. Those are real estate, retail, education, entertainment, restaurants, all deemed non-essential. Um, as um, Adam Tuke, I believe this guy's name is, writes uh, for foreign policy, Adam Tuse writes for foreign policy. In sectors like retail, which has recently come under fierce pressure from online competition, the temporary lockdown may prove to be terminal. In many cases, the stores that shut down in early March will not reopen, of course, unless you get a bailout. The jobs will be permanently lost. Millions of Americans and their families are facing catastrophe. The north of Italy, which was particularly hard hit by the coronavirus epidemic and, and pandemic, um, comprises 50% of Italian GDP. Uh, due to its dependence on foreign exports, Germany's GDP is expected to fall by more than the United States is, while the OECD forecasts, quote, global austerity. China's official figures show its unemployment at 6.2%. That's the highest since they began record-keeping in uh, the early 90s. Uh, reports posit that as many as 205 million migrant workers were furloughed, one quarter of the Chinese workforce. Uh, India's workforce numbers 471 million, most of which, 19% that is, excuse me, are just 20% actually, are covered by uh, Social Security. So of the 471 million, 19% are covered by Social Security. Two-thirds have no formal employment contract. And at least 100 million are migrant workers. So that means that they quite likely do not have access to the social security system there. In emerging e-market economies, we're going to see the first contraction since the end of World War II. Uh, while the U.S.'s stimulus package is the largest in U.S. peacetime history, if you want to call this peacetime. And Germany has declared an emergency, lifting its limits on public debt. Uh, U.S. news reports that Europe as a whole will likely shrink by 9.8%, the largest decline since records began in 1970. The Fed, uh, by late March, was purchasing $90 billion of assets per day uh, as a part of its uh, asset purchase program. This is a very much a, this is a similar program to what uh, was implemented in the wake of the 2008 financial crash. However, we're looking at a magnitude of order larger program, so that is QE infinity and so with this 90 billion per day uh, that is more than Ben Bernanke's Fed purchased during most months during the crisis and uh, each and every day each and every second of every day the Fed swapped a million dollars worth of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities for cash um, the Fed announced as the latest uh, unemployment numbers came in on April 9th that it would be launching an additional 2.3 trillion in asset purchases they had already burned through the other money 73% of Americans, meanwhile, said they endured a loss of income in March. 73%. While one-third did not pay rent as of April 5th. Uh, we're looking at likely consumer debt delinquency. Um, I've heard people argue that uh, when people get these, the stimulus money, that it'll go to service debt. But I think likely people will be purchasing essential items like food toilet paper. Europe's petrol consumption has decreased by 88%. Uh, the automobile market is devastated with manufacturers across Europe and Asia now sitting on the sidelines entirely. China's Association of Automobile Manufacturers said its year-on-year -year sales plunged by 48.4% in March. And in the U.S., some states have banned uh, the selling of automobiles altogether. And in fact, they've uh, even banned the sale of seeds. So, hmm. Seas are not essential, apparently. As uh, Adam Tooze writes in Foreign Policy, quote, the longer we sustain the lockdown, the deeper the scarring to the economy and the slower the recovery. Uh, public debt on the balance sheets of banks is increasing at, of central banks is increasing at the largest clip ever during peacetime. The central banks are keeping interest rates low, but uh, the plan would be then that this will be repaid. How? Tax increases, austerity, perhaps even debt jubilees that is public defaults, which, which would cause like a repricing, uh, probably by fiat, of um, 
currencies and assets, or perhaps a little mixture of all of the above. Uh, some reports posit U.S. debt will exceed 100% of GDP. Japan ha has debt at 100% of GDP, perhaps even higher at 300%. And uh, we're looking at uh, U.S. debt exceeding 100% uh, of GDP by the end of 2020. Uh, central banks will be buying the debt of governments and they're, and also just basically printing money, right? So as the uh, uh, prime minister of spokesperson said quote the bank of england will temporarily extend use of the government's long-standing ways and means facility to help government cash flows and provide a temporary short-term source of additional funding so that title that that article is titled the new normal and this is a term that i've seen floated around quite a bit lately as we're heading into a new normal and uh the implications of this article is the new normal is austerity the next uh, article uh, talks about some fun solutions to the uh, current coronavirus pandemic. Um, it's on goldsilverbitcoin.com slash news. It's a uh, solution to coronavirus is mass surveillance apparently. So this uh, takes this article looks at a few different studies by think tanks. I think most of them are based in uh, DC with uh, perhaps Harvard's based there in Massachusetts. The American Enterprise Institute the Center for American Progress, and Harvard Safra Center for Ethics. So uh, American Enterprise Institute, I believe this is a, a conservative think tank, and the Center for American Progress is a liberal think tank, and then uh, Harvard Safra Center for Ethics, of course, is an academic think tank. But it's interesting to me because when we look at the uh, proposals floated by the conservative and the, and the liberal think tank, um, they pretty much have the same idea. So. Um, we talk a lot in terms of left wing, right wing, and to quote uh, Modest Mouse, which was a band I listened to growing up, left wing, right wing, chicken wing. They uh, all three propose a phase one plan when it comes to uh, ending the lockdown or reopening the country, which entails, uh, of course, the national lockdown, uh, social distancing, all of which to flatten the curve, of course. Uh, after 45 days in the uh, the CAP and Harvard proposals, social distancing requirements are softened. Mass surveillance is implemented. Nearly all Americans will download an app to their phone to geotrack each and every movement. If you came into contact with someone who gets COVID-19, you would be alerted to quarantine. You would be required to scan QR codes while boarding mass transit or enter entering high-risk public areas. This has been implemented in Taiwan. It's been implemented in China as well. Uh, polling shows, however, that 70% 70, 70 of Republicans and 46% of Democrats strongly oppose using cell phone data to enforce quarantine orders. And this is, uh, you can see, uh, um, the study shared by Dan Hopkins at dhopkins1776 on Twitter. And those numbers represent people who are strongly opposed to uh, the cell phones being used to uh, track their movements. As the CAP, Center for American Progress, proposal reads, quote, the entity that hosts the data must be a trusted nonprofit organization. Doesn't that sound nice? All that means is that uh, they don't pay tax. The entity that hosts the data must be a trusted nonprofit organization, not private technology companies or the federal government. The app could be developed for a purely public health nonprofit entity such as the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials, ASTO, an organization that represents state officials, which would host the data. Congress or foundations could provide funding to, to develop and operate the technology. States licensing the app could provide ongoing operational funding to ASTO, provided states receive federal funding for this purpose. So, so uh, the states that implement this will receive federal funding in this proposal. So um, that will incentivize the states to implement this because they want that funding. Continuing, additional protections must include the following. The amount of data needed and shared must be minimized. The system must be transparent, yada, yada, yada. As a condition of receiving 
future COVID-19 tests, individuals may be required to download the app, which would include their test results. For others, the app would be voluntarily um, required. It would be voluntary. Although the vast majority of people could be expected to download it to see if there are cases in their neighborhood or near their workplace. A Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Romer foresees mass testing, 22 million tests per day. Uh, each individual would then get tested every 14 days. And if you test positive, you're then quickly quarantined. In the, uh, the AEI proposal, the American Enterprise Institute, does not see the V-shaped recovery that has been um, that has been predicted by Wall Street interests. I mean, perhaps we're going to get a. I mean, Wall Street's going to get a V-shaped recovery for themselves because the Fed's just going to blow a bunch of bubbles while increasing public debt. Um, AI, AEI does see uh, the think tank. The think tanks uh, overall see a need for surveillance uh, dystopia apparently. Meanwhile, Apple and Google uh, will embed voluntary contact tracing, uh, interoperability, interoperable functionality in their phones, making the data interoperable across iOS and Android. So isn't that nice? Like Apple and Google are now working together. I think we've, uh, we're often floated that these uh, corporations are, are competitors to one another, but there's a lot more cooperation than you would see in a traditional uh, kind of uh, competitor scenario, right? Perhaps these brands are just a means of uh, getting around monopoly laws. So the solution to coronavirus, of course, is a panopticon. How convenient. The next article at goldsilverbitcoin.com slash news is Club of Rome president says that we are looking at a different world, a different economy suddenly dawning. Uh, the op-ed was pinned by a co-president of the Club of Rome, and the Club of Rome is a, a club comprised of former heads of state, UN bureaucrats, and high-level politicians. Uh, the article is entitled Emergence from Emergency. Very clever. The Case for a Holistic Economic Recovery Plan. And it goes a little something like this. Quote, We call on EU heads of state to ensure that recovery plans do not undermine climate neutrality pathways and European Green Deal objectives due to the clear feedback loops that will impact future public health. The pandemic demonstrates overnight transformational change is possible, according to the authors. So I suspect they're referring to the lockdowns. Oh, cool. You know, if we can lock down uh, two thirds of the planet, what else can we do? Quote, a different world, a different economy is suddenly dawning. So then what must be done? As Lenin might say, according to the authors, this is an unprecedented opportunity to move away from unmitigated growth at all costs and the old fossil fuel economy. Well, as we saw in the last report with uh, petrol demand down 88% in Europe, we've in some societies already moved away from the fossil fuel economy. Now the plan, the, the, the question is then, Will we return to it or not? And is uh, are these alternative uh, energy methods as robust as uh, kind of the petrol-based uh, methods? And of course, like this isn't a dichotomy. I'm not sitting here being like, oh yeah, like fossil fuels and oil, like those are the only way. Certainly, we are open to, like all of us, everyone is open to new technologies that create a cleaner. Um, planet but the reality is is that like when you drive an electric car green technology you can only drive so far now is that a technological shortcoming or is that kind of a regulatory um, implementation so uh, when we look at the uh, the further um, kind of uh, quotes in this article like uh, moving away from the fuel economy uh, and delivering a lasting balance between people, prosperity, and our planetary boundaries. So the authors are calling for a Marshall Plan S Green Deal. In the midst of a global health emergency, they write, an imminent economic recession, depression, based on the numbers that we've just looked at, the importance of the European Green Deal has become even greater, they write. It must be the framework for responding to the current crisis and the broader planetary emergency of which it is a part. They add, 
The European Green Deal should do the same with a greater risk between the converging tipping points of public health, climate change, and biodiversity, and ensure we redirect perverse subsidies in private and public capital towards solutions that promote a just transition for resilient societies and economies. So um, that is subsidies, that's pu public money. So, I mean, these discussions amongst these uh, UN bureaucrats and public health officials is taking place uh, above and beyond sort of like the democratic societies that we all believe we live in and are and are taking place behind the scenes. The duo called, furthermore, for a digital optimization to improve a long-term quality of life, even after the pandemic has run its course. So, like, basically, once the, uh, the pandemic is gone, we're going to have this new normal, and these discussions about this new normal are taking place outside of the purview of the public, more or less. Um, at least most people won't really take uh, the time to read between the lines and in pieces penned by people who have been close to the kind of campfire of power um, on the planet. Like Henry Kissinger, we, we detailed a piece that he wrote uh, in Wall Street Journal. Here we're looking at this piece that is uh, emanating from a club with very, very connected people in it. Um, quote, for example, there is no good reason to be phasing out fossil fuels and deploying renewable energy technologies most of which are now globally available and already cheaper than fossil fuels in many cases, but they don't let you drive as far, for instance, and like, oh, well, you know what, maybe, uh, you know, why do you need to drive so far in the first place? Well, I mean, business, for one, but second of all, like, let's say that you get a, an emergency phone call in the middle of the night and, like, your parent is ill and you need to drive to see them, perhaps see them off into their next life or, or their passing, then... Uh, you, that won't be an option. You'll only be able to drive 500 miles and then you have to stop and recharge and who knows, maybe they'll get there too late. It's about the edge code. Edge, it's about how edge cases affect individuals. So, quote. Uh, fossil fuel subsidies should be redirected to proper green and social infrastructure, including well-needed health system upgrades. Meanwhile, like hospitals across... North America, at least, are, like, sitting empty. I mean, health system's pretty good, people. We, like, in the United States, I think we've got one of the best uh, health systems uh, in the in the world. We have mighty high technology. Of course, uh, the, how to upgrade a health system? Well, I mean, I think you need to, like, take a step back and start encouraging healthy ways of living, preventative measures for disease. So that entails just eating healthy, drinking healthy water, clean water. Um, and incorporating the knowledge of the ancients into the uh, kind of modern think modern uh, thinking or, or progressive thinking healthcare system. But instead, I mean, it looks like we're going to get some other well-needed health system upgrades here, which are not defined. The authors conclude. We therefore call upon European leaders to embrace this moment of reflection and upheaval to adopt economic recovery plans that create more resilient communities, greater health and well-being, and shared prosperity on a healthy planet so that we can truly emerge from the emergency stronger and more resilient. It sounds so nice, but let's take a look at uh, what uh, a greening of society might look like on the food front. So this next article is uh, at goldsilverbitcoin.com slash news as they all are. And uh, it's called EU, says, let them eat insects. Brussels is moving to permitting its member states to, serve, to uh, legalize the serving of insects and worms as human food. The European Union's Food Safety Authority will allow mealworms, locusts, and adult crickets for humans to eat. But it's okay. Such bugs can be used in making burgers, granola, and even pasta. Eating insects is common across South America, Africa, and Asia. So, quote, we believe that insects, so this is a Christopher Darien, the Secretary General of the Industry Organization International Platform of Insects for Food and Feed. We believe that insects for food is one solution for some of the biggest challenges we are facing on the planet. In the context of scarce resources and insect, 
so let's see here. In the context of scarce resources, insect production is not too demanding. You have the capacity to produce high quality protein. That is a very promising solution. Kristen Dunlop, the head of European Institute of Innovation and Technology, Climate Knowledge and Innovation Community, who comes up with the names for these things? It's like it's like a bad movie. It's like a joke. It's like the movie Brazil. Um, quote, we need protein and we need to continue to eat it, she told an audience in Amsterdam last year. And we need to be a able to support an exponentially growing population. But we must do so in a way that stops destroying species around us. We know that insect protein is very good protein, and it's also cultivatable in a way that has significantly less carbon environment impact than cultivating millions of cattle, sheep, and pigs. These stories and others you can find at goldsilverbitcoin.com. Thank you for uh, listening to the news with Bitcoin on April 15, 2020. We hope you're staying healthy. We hope that you're safe and happy and have a great day.